As we come on the air, Israel is on the brink of an expanded war that could have enormous repercussions. The humanitarian situation in Gaza is grim and likely to worsen as thousands attempt to flee before the ground offensive starts. The United Nations warned yesterday that it would be impossible for such a rapid exodus of civilians without devastating humanitarian consequences. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in the region shuttling between Mideast countries to negotiate opening a crossing from Gaza into Egypt to get civilians out. Tomorrow, he plans to return to Tel Aviv for additional meetings with Prime Minister Netanyahu. We begin our coverage from Israel with CBS News foreign correspondent Charlie Daggett. We want to caution viewers, some of the content is quite distressing. Israeli artillery and airstrikes have pounded Gaza in one of the most intense sustained bombardments the narrow strip of land has ever seen. Authorities in Gaza say more than 2,300 people have been killed, a quarter of them children. Hundreds of thousands of people have been heeding warnings from the Israeli military in leaflets dropped from the sky to evacuate from north to south. The UN says nearly one million people have been displaced, nearly half the territory's population, with thousands crowding the Rafah crossing with Egypt, where CBS News found American Susan Peseso. The bombing, the killing, terrorizing kids, women, killing everybody. Also among those trying to escape, British schoolgirl Miriam. Like every place I go, I go run away, and I just find bombs, and I find dead people. And like maybe one day I'll end up like them, but it's a really scary thing for me. <laughs> Even under fire, Hamas continues to launch missiles into Israel. And sporadic fighting broke out on a second front after the militant group Hezbollah fired rockets into Israel from Lebanon. Nearer to Gaza, Israeli troops and armor are massing for an expected ground invasion on an unprecedented scale. The Kafar Azah kibbutz, where Hamas gunmen went on a murderous rampage against families and children, has now become an Israeli front line. Burnt out vehicles and destroyed homes, the corpses of Hamas gunmen left to rot where they fell. Drones buzzed overhead, explosions rang out as Colonel Golan Vash walked us through the bloody aftermath and blackened homes. You can still see the beast here in this bed. Mm -hmm. Two women. women were lying. Murdered inside the safe room that was supposed to protect them. Alive. He was sitting here and shot everyone uh, that stepped outside. The Israelis called this the neighborhood of slaughter. Nearly every single resident was killed here. 66 people on the street alone. A lot of children? A lot of children. Some of them, some of the children tried to hide behind these bushes. And they found them, and they slaughtered them, and they were happy. Amid the sadness here, a growing anger. Why weren't communities so close to Gaza better protected? And why did it take Israeli forces hours to respond? We failed. Period. We failed protecting the civilians. It shouldn't be happened. Not like this, never, not in this scale. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu convened the country's expanded emergency cabinet for the first time today, saying Hamas thought we would be demolished, but it is we who will demolish Hamas. Margaret? That's Charlie Daggett in Tel Aviv.